Hello everyone, Lock Gardening Bird Lady here coming to you guys with a quick video. And first, let me first apologize. Number one, let me apologize about my appearance. See what had happened was nah seriously. Um I have been working like nonstop. I cannot tell you guys when the last time I had an off day. Um I've been working on my off days and on the days that I do work, like this morning, I've been working like this morning. I got up early and I worked overtime and I get a few hours, I think like three and a half hours before I have to go back to work and work my regular shift. And then I work um, like an hour or so after of overtime after my regular shift. So um, and in between working overtime and my regular shift, I usually come out in the yard and I do some kind of gardening work um, between those shifts. Um, and on my lunch break is when I try to do like the housework and doing laundry and between, while I'm actually working, um, I'm folding clothes. I work from home, so I'm folding clothes and um, things like that while I'm working from home. And so I'm, you know, talking to customers and, and folding up clothes or whatever. And um, so I, I'm just extremely, extremely busy and I sleep when I can. And um, so it's just really, really busy. And I know I need like a retwist and I need my hair done. But um, it's we're in the middle of a t pandemic and no one's touching my hair. And I just don't have time to do it myself. So my hair will probably get done in like June or July or whenever the pand pandemic is over and we have a cure. So as of right now, I'm not going anywhere to get my hair done. I'm not going anywhere, period. And um, <laughs> I know that was a lot, but I've just been extremely, extremely busy. So with that being said, let's jump into the video and excuse the experience, the appearance and the appearance. God, I can't get that out. And um, so I'm gonna try to between um, with my breaks or whatever, um, if I can, if I don't have a lot of, cause I try to do my housework and cleaning and and everything like that on my lunch breaks but if i have time on my lunch break hopefully i can get these videos edited and up um loaded today and excuse if my dogs start barking and whining in the background excuse me for that and of course i have to have my casper and danny time have to give them their time as well so just life is just really really busy right now so that's why i look just really chaotic right now so let's just jump into this video. So I wanted to do this video because, um, of course, you know, uh, I'm a vegetable gardener. But, um, and I'm going to say this again in every single video. I am married. I got married February 24th. So my husband is gardening with me majority of the time. And um, he is, it's, it's different having, this is my first time having someone to garden with me. Cause whenever I, when I was married before I had my husband didn't garden with me, my ex-husband didn't garden with me before. So having someone to garden with me, it is very exciting and a little bit, you know, it's not stressful, but, um, it's just, just, you have to, um, just really be open and open because with me doing it by myself for so long um i have to be mindful to be inclusive and not want and be open as well and not want to just like hey this is the way i'm used to doing it and you're going to do it my way and i know with my personality and with me being a master gardener and with the way that I am, sometimes I can be like, you know, I've always done it my way. We're doing it my way. And so I have to remember not to be that way um, sometimes. And I I think in the, well, not I think, but in the beginning, I, I was that way. And I had to realize that I didn't want to turn him away from wanting to garden with me because that was, you know, us bonding together and that was us growing together and so i had to become more inclusive it just opens up this whole world and it just has drawn us so much closer together just gardening together and just growing and learning and me being there and i love to teach and um so i wanted to do this video on because he keeps asking why flowers why do you have flowers in the garden? Why are we putting flowers in the garden? This is supposed to be a vegetable garden. We're supposed to be growing food. Why are you putting flowers in the garden? Why are you getting flowers? Why are we wasting our time and our money on flowers? So that's what I want to focus this video on. I want this folk to focus this video on vegetable gardening. Why flowers? <laughs> One, 
flowers are absolutely beautiful not only because you have all this green and maybe you may have some yellow from squash or some red from some tomatoes or some purple from maybe um eggplant or or, or or red from peppers or something but mostly in the vegetable garden majority of that vegetable garden you're gonna see green you're gonna see green but when you incorporate flowers you're gonna see some yellow some orange some red some pink some blues it brings just a ray of color and when you see flowers I don't care how hard you are flowers they just bring about this feeling of warmth flowers just bring a, about this feeling of just oh my god it just makes people feel better I don't care who you are flowers just make you feel better so not only are flowers just absolutely beautiful they just they they make you feel warm they, they make you feel better so that's one reason why i like having flowers in the garden they just they just bring beauty in the garden so not only reason another reason reason number two not only do flowers bring be are beauty are flowers beautiful to us but they're beautiful to the main thing that we need in our garden is pollinators pollinators bees butterflies wasps they're beautiful to them too so they draw them in and the importance of pollinators is about 80 to 90 percent of what we eat comes from pollinators we're talking about tomatoes squash watermelon cucumbers um eggplant honeydew cantaloupe <laughs> I mean, I can keep, I can go on and on and on. Majority of what you see in the grocery stores, in the produce section, section, that comes from pollinators. We wouldn't have that without pollinators. Yeah, wind can help pollinate it, but there's nothing like when a bee um, comes onto that plant and it vibrates that plant and that pollen falls, or when that bee carries that pollen from that male flower to that female flower, there's nothing like that there's nothing like like that that can imitate it because some some plants no matter how the wind blows unless that that bee takes that pollen from one plant from that male flower to that female flower it will never get pollinated like some of us who don't who some of us gardeners who don't have a lot of bees we have to actually go out with a q-tip or whatever and hand pollinate like that's my fear this year is um because i'm in a new area i got a new start with gardening i don't have a lot of flowers that are blooming right now um i have some female squash um that are starting to pop up i don't have any male, male flowers that have come on yet but that's what i was telling my husband yesterday i'm like we're probably gonna have to hand pollinate our squash because I haven't seen any bees yet. So hopefully when these squash flowers start opening up, it'll draw in some honeybees. But right now, uh, the only thing that I've seen in this area is, is um, carpenter bees, you know, drilling holes in, inside of the house, in the wood in the house. But we're probably going to have to hand pollinate until my sunflowers start opening up and drawing in some bees. So um, yeah, that's, that's what we need bees for and not or pollinators for. And not only, um, is it for do they pollinate food but majority of our clothes that we wear cotton bees help with pollinating cotton so we can have clothes so that's why pollinators are so important and number three is they also help control the pests that we don't want in our our garden like aphids oh aphids oh, oh aphids 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 and um like I had turned over a tomato plant leaf the other day, something about my husky red tomatoes, something about them. The red aphids love them. They love, they don't, they're not touching any of my other tomato plants except for my husky red tomatoes. They're not touching anything else in my garden. So there are some lady ladybugs in my garden, but I only saw a few and they're not enough to control those, um, those um as those aphids that i had so what i had to do was do the little soapy water mix that i had with the ivory soap and i had to get rid of them that way but 
ladybugs help um, control the aphid populations and flowers and stuff bring in ladybugs and stuff too. Ladybugs eat the aphids. They control the aphids and the aphids destroy our plants. And the same thing, those flowers, they bring in wasps. Wasps eat like the worms. Like I was in, I was in the garden the other day and on my lacinato kale that I have, there's worms that are eating the kale. And I go in in the morning and I hand pick, you know, I hand pick the worms off when I when I see them or whatever. But it was later on in the evening. I guess I missed one of the worms or whatever. And it was something that I've never seen before. I've never seen it before. So it was a wasp that was just sitting on the kale leaf and it had a green worm, those green cabbage worm. It had the green cabbage worm just hanging out his mouth, out his little mouth or whatever so i ran in the house to get my camera and i ran back and when i ran back to take a picture of the wasp it flew off with the worm in his mouth and i was telling my husband i was like man i missed it he was like what were you trying to get i saw i saw the bug fly off i was like it was a wasp with a worm in his mouth and that was a perfect example and i was telling him i said see these flowers these flowers draw in these wasps and these wasps even though I'm trying to get these worms, cause he's like, get the seven dust. And I'm like, no, <laughs> no, leave the seven dust alone. No, he's so quick to let, whenever I'm like, well, we got, I gotta get these worms. I gotta get these, he's like, get the seven dust. I'm like, leave the seven dust alone, baby. Leave the seven dust alone. Put down the seven dust. And um, I'm like, no, I said, this is what I'm trying to tell you. These flowers that I have out here, they're drawing in the wasps and the wasps they're eating they're eating the things that we don't want in our garden so they have even though i can't pick off all these worms i may miss go miss the miss the worm because sometimes i don't have my specs on in the morning time every morning sometimes i just come out here and i'm like i'm still sleepy but i'm out because i know the worms they eat it early in the, you know in the in around dusk and so i'm out here trying to catch them before they go they get to hiding and pick them, picking them off by hand or trying to do an organic gardening, gardening way. And sometimes I may miss, miss a worm somewhere, but that worm got caught slipping and that wasp got him. And that's what I was telling him. I was like, yeah, even though, you know, they may destroy, put some hole in our leaves, but we may miss one or two, but we got these flowers because my, all my marigolds, you know they're blooming or whatever i actually bought them um from the nursery and they were in bloom when i bought them from the nursery which i try to grow everything from seed but i got a late start this year but um i have some zinnias and everything and some salvia that um are drawing in some pollinators or drawing in wasps and hoverflies but um i'm like that wasp ate that ate that worm so um it draws in those predatory wasps and those um, ladybugs and even birds will eat the worms you know they will eat the worms sometimes you know when I'm out here I just take it I just throw the worms out there in the yard and I look out the window later and the birds are out there picking off you know and I know that as they're picking I know they're eating the worms you know so even things like that they they draw in those predators that are going to eat what we don't want now I know when I start raising you know monarch caterpillars again that I'm gonna have to watch out for those wasps eating my monarch caterpillars, but at the same time, you know, those monarchs have a defense mechanism, but I'm just gonna have to be real careful about that. But that's another video. Um, so they help bring in the predators as well. And I think I'm on reason number four. I kind of lost track, but reason number four is the smell of some of these flowers will also deter pests and by that meaning is some pests they lay their eggs based and they find what they're looking for based on the smell like you have um the squash bug it finds its it lays its eggs on squash based on the smell of squash plant but if you plant like marigolds around it that smell of the marigolds if you plant enough it can deter that spot that's it can overwhelm the squash and the squash bug will not smell the squash it will smell the um the marigolds instead and it won't be able to find that squash and also it can their nematodes that live in the soil 
and it said that the marigolds can actually um, get rid of not completely it can decrease the amount of nematodes that live in the soil and nematodes they can eat the plants roots and completely destroy your plants from the root so I mean flowers they can do a lot of things and there are a lot I'm gonna put links in the description box I didn't want this video to be that long I'm gonna have to really cut a lot of it out but um just some of my favorite plants to plant in the uh, in my garden just i'm gonna give you just a few um because i have so many that i love to plant in my garden but i'm just gonna give you maybe um i'm gonna give you maybe about i'll give you three of my favorite my top three favorite plants to have in the garden and this is gonna be so hard <laughs> um Oh my God. My top three flowers to have in the garden would have to be number one is sunflowers. Sunflowers because sunflowers is like a open for business sign. Because especially if you put the really tall, I put different types of sunflowers all over the garden. Um, I put the mammoth sunflowers in the garden and that's like an open for business sign. You get the really tall mammoth sunflowers. They can be seen. I mean, they get up to like eight, nine feet tall. And they can be seen from a long distance away. Like a bee that's hunting for nectar will see that flower and it's coming to your yard. And it's bringing its friends and it's coming. It's gonna keep coming. It's gonna keep coming. It's gonna keep coming. It's gonna see that one flower. And once it finds your yard from that one flower, it's gonna find all the other flowers that you have in your yard. So sunflowers, yes. And it also that sunflower is also gonna provide um, seed um, and everything for your birds. And not only do bees like it, but I've had um, bees, I've had like bumblebees, honeybees, um, wasps, um, hoverflies, um, and butterflies all on sunflowers. And the, the Mexican torch sunflower, oh my God, I've had several types of pollinators on one Mexican torch sunflower. And if you grow that sunflower, make sure you have a lot of space when you grow it because I thought it was gonna be just this tiny little flower, but I mean, it was a, like a massive bush and it bloomed for a really long time and it was very prolific it reseeded and i just kept collecting seeds i still have seeds from it and um the butterflies were crazy about it and um the second one that i would say would of course be marigolds because i grow every vegetable that i have in my garden i have at least two um or more marigolds around it um French marigolds, but I have um, several type of marigolds around uh, throughout my garden um, for its beneficial of deterring pests and nematodes and as well as drawing in pollinators because butterflies seem to really love the marigolds as well as the bees really like the marigolds. And the third one, uh, It's hard to choose between the zinnias and the and the um, milkweed. I would have to say the zinnias because um, they can be pretty much found everywhere. Milkweed is kind of hard to find. I would say zinnias um, because they're really easy to grow and they're really easy to find. Um, and yeah, I would say zinnias will have to be, um, so sunflowers, zinnias, and marigolds would be my top three flowers to have in my garden at any time. Um, and if I had to name a fourth one, it would have to be milkweed because the bees go absolutely bananas for milkweed. And if I had a name number five, <laughs> it would have to be, um, um i don't know the official name of it but oh man it is called i think gray flower or gray star i'll put it up here somewhere 
the bees go banana for that and the sixth one if i had a name that would be called bees friends i don't know the the official name of that but yes if you have a vegetable garden make sure you put flowers incorporate flowers into your vegetable vegetable garden and also make sure if you are having um make sure you have a place for of water with rocks um maybe what rock sand little muddy and water in it so that the bees and the butterflies will and the wasps will have a place to get get a drink and you will keep pollinators in your garden so i hope this video helped um you understand why it's important to have flowers not only vegetables but as well as flowers incorporated in your vegetable garden especially if you're trying to have a whole eco ecosystem and if you are trying to do things organically and that will keep you from you know all the seven dust and everything will work together and you'll be you'll notice that you it will seem like you will have more you will have more insects in your um vegetable garden but you will have less pests thank you so much for Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. And as usual, toodaloo. Bye-bye.